My name's Steve, welcome to another Mind Bomb training video. Um, today's topic is um, an introduction to your marketing plan. Um, so it's just a, an outline really of um, what you might um, uh, consider for your marketing plan, what you should actually be thinking of um, and how to put it together. Um, <laughs> really, if you find yourself struggling with a, a whole series of disjointed um, marketing type advertising events, um, and promotions, um, or even if you're like me, <laughs> losing the world to live at times with the um, the whole social media thing, uh, which seems to have taken over the the marketing function. And um, really, it's a, a worthwhile exercise. So if you bear with me on this video, um, hopefully it'll be something useful for you. So first is a an attempt at um, a, a definition of marketing. There's all sorts of different definitions that I've seen, and um, Really, you need to, to think in terms of marketing as um, everything that supports the sales, um, everything that adds value to the, the, the business um, for your customers. So it can be a whole range of different things. Obviously, the things like advertising, PR, promotion, um, all of that kind of thing is a fairly well-worn path. But it can also include, obviously, things like websites, um, things across the branding, all the, the different branding issues of the business. Packaging should be included. It should really cover um, uh, stuff like the packaging and um, the way that you can actually present the product. So all of that kind of thing, um, as well as any events um, and promotions uh, that you might do to support the, the uh, customer value. The marketing is such a, um, a broad part of any business um, and really it's changed an awful lot in the last 10 years or so. And I've, I've kind of been putting off dealing with it for the Mind Bomb training channel. Um, having thought about it um, a couple of times, I've put back the idea of doing this video. Um, but when I, when I sat down and actually uh, got into it, when I first started um, uh, thinking about this, um, I was so concerned that the, the whole social media thing had actually taken over um, the, uh, the marketing channel. Uh, but really, it's just the medium that's changed. Instead of all being about print and leaflets, TV advertising, um, all of the other uh, kind of traditional forms of um, getting that message across, it's really the medium now. So the, the social media platforms have not completely, but um, effectively uh, replaced those, um, those channels for you. But the, the principle is still the same. So this is why I wanted to, to do this video. I think there is... Um, it's worth going back to the basics and looking again at the, the principles that you need to be able to create your um, marketing plan for the business. Really, the more I thought about it, then the, the truth is that the, um, the world may have changed and uh, social media is a um, big part of that. Um, but the, the, the principles of creating a coherent uh, marketing plan for the business are, are basically the same. So if we go back to the, the first principles, then... Uh, looking at the, the way that you want to actually string the, the whole thing together, um, it has to be a coordinated uh, approach across all the, uh, the different parts of the business. So to start with, let's look at the, the brand and brand values, um, always a key part of um, any marketing campaign. <clears throat> so you need to be able to identify what your product or service is um, and what the, the brand value should be. That might be something like um, um, comfortable and traditional. Um, it may be young and um, arty. Um, it, it could be a whole range of different things. It might be solid and professional. Um, might be the, the brand values that you actually identify. But you've got to sit down and start with that. What should your brand actually represent? And how, uh, how are you actually trying to um, promote it? What applies for you to be able to promote that? Once you've actually identified that once you can um, get down to what your customers should be perceiving your brand as then all the all the other things should follow so um, as the as the proverbial stick of rock is um, it should actually run right the way through uh, whether it's print material packaging websites 
um, all of the, the whole thing, the way that you actually present at the back of your mind should be the brand values um, that you're trying to present the, the business as having. So it's a worthwhile exercise, take some time out and think about those brand values to start with. Then once you've um, established the brand values, really you can build on that. So you've actually got things like the logo, um, design, artwork, all of the colors that you're going to use, all of that can actually follow from the, the values that you're actually trying to create. So uh, at the same time that you're doing the, um, the assessment of the, the brand values, just look at everything and make sure that your your room, uh, the whole thing flows. Your brand um, flows from the initial values. Make sure that you've got the right kind of colours with the artwork and the design, and um, that you don't just do it piecemeal and end up with a, a whole range of different um, logo designs, colours, artwork, and so on. Um, all of that's got to be consistent through everything that you do. So the second part, second point to consider is the customer demographic. Really, that might actually uh, come out of the, the brand value. You should actually um, understand where the um, customers are coming from. That customer demographic should actually inform you with a lot of the, um, the way that you then present um, the, the company to the customer. And um, once you've worked that out, if your customer is going to be the over over 50s age group, if it's going to be the teenagers, um, what, it, what it is, you've then got to work out where you can find them. So um, if, if, you're, um, if you're a clothing brand, for instance, then there's no point in um, um, creating some fantastic um, eye-catching high street store um, if the truth is that really your, your products are really a um, a Primark equivalent and um, sold mostly online. So understand the, the customer um, and understand where they're actually likely to be shopping and that will help you um, identify the, the marketing efforts that you need to be able to reach those customers. So number three is that joined up thinking, uh, the coordination. And um, I'm sure there's a, a clever marketing phrase for it, um, but you really need to be able to um, work out the, the way that your um, logos, colours, etc. run right the way through the, um, the marketing promotional efforts. As I say, the, the logos are an obvious example. It's got to be the same on the website and it's got to be the same in print and it's got to be the, the same at any show. Um, if you're going to print it onto, um, I don't know, clothing or whatever else, it's actually got to be the same all the way through. And um, that coordination is really important in terms of the um, connection with the, um, with the customer. It's actually got to be identified right the way through. Equally, you've got to make sure that the, the timing and the effective um, reach of your marketing campaign um, is consistent through the year. So you, you've got to make sure that you're not going to be releasing a, a brand new product in the same month that you're actually um, relaunching the, the website. So think a bit about the, the way that the, um, uh, the marketing effort is um, going to be spread across the year and um, how that um, will affect the different parts of the marketing that you're going to be doing. Um, and the same with the, um, the, the timing issue, if you have seasonality within the business, um, there's no point in having a big marketing drive um, in the run up to Christmas when you're already doing twice the normal sales that you would expect to see. Um, really, you've actually got to work out where the best time is across the year so that you're coordinating the, uh, the marketing effort and maximum effort to, um, to go with the, the correct times of the year. Point number four um, might be an obvious one, but um, you've got to have a budget. So when you're doing your marketing plan, um, obviously there's got to be a, um, a budget that goes alongside it. So obviously with the, uh, the budget, it's got to be um, spread across a, a whole year. Um, you might have some big events across the year, so you might um, need to have more in one month than another. You might not have anything um, in the, the December period if that's already a busy um, period for you. Um, and the same over the, the summer. You know, if you're, um, if you're seasonally quiet or particularly busy over the summer, you need to be working out how the, the budget's going to be required for that as well. So it won't be the same every month. You're going to have ups and downs in the budget and um, think about it and obviously it's got to be seen as an expense. Um, you might say it's an investment for the future, and um, I'm sure it is. The, the truth is you're going to have to use the marketing and promotion in various different ways to be able to um, 
to build the business and create that um, future for the business. However, you've still got to meet the, the spend on the, the months that you're actually doing it. So um, it, is a, it is a cost, it's an expense that you've got to factor in and um, make sure that you cut the cloth accordingly. Um, that's got to be part of the, the plan in the, um, in the first instance. So that leads into point number five. Uh, point number five is about how you divide up the calendar. Um, obviously, we talked about it being across a, a plan for a whole year, um, but it's particularly important when you're thinking about the, the spend that you're going to have, you're thinking about the impact that you want at the different times of the year, um, and maybe key events. You know, there might be um, key trade shows that you really should be attending, and um, those have got to be um, scheduled in at the appropriate times. Um, so think about the, the, the coordination. It runs right the way through the budget, it runs through the timing, um, and really it should flow through everything that you do. Um, so once you've got all of those things, then you can actually work out the, um, the plan across the, the whole year. So you might have noticed I've rather sidestepped the, the issue of the, the medium. Um, I think once upon a time it would have been relatively easy to have covered the, the different types of uh, medium and how we were going to reach um, different market segments of customers. Um, but this time I, I think I'm going to park that and leave that to one side. Um, I will come back to it. The, I'm actually speaking to a few people about the whole uh, digital marketing thing and how we're actually going to um, break that down. Hopefully I'll actually have some news on that shortly. But the, uh, the, the reality is, um, for, the, for the time being, look at the principles. Uh, the principles are still the same. You've actually got to work out um, who your customers are, where you can find them, make sure that you've got the the consistent message um, and make sure that you can actually reach those customers at the right time of year. Um, and obviously all within a budget, it's as easy as that. <laughs> That's all there is to it. So um, hopefully it's been useful to work out the uh, principles, the guiding principles that you're going to need for your marketing plan. And I shall come back about the, um, uh, the medium and how things have changed for um, marketing these days. So um, yeah, as a, a stepping point, I hope that's been useful. And um, as ever, thank you for watching and I shall see you next time. Thank you.